Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to talk about Hermes surviving the downfall of all other luxury brands at the moment. We're in 2023 and uh, people are talking about the three-year luxury boom, the pandemic years, coming to a total end. We've talked about it a lot on my channel, but uh, more information is surfacing as time goes by and as most of these brands are not earning the money they expected they were going to earn, especially the ones that are on the stock market and, uh, you know, the shares and the dividends, you know, the investors are not so happy because the prognosis, well, turns out that the growths are not as high as expected. Now, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dick Wall spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who already pledged this video. It's being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join us. Join us in the live chats. I got my co-chat tours in the live chats and here in the sidebar. Hi, guys. So listen, this is here's where it's at. Um, several articles are reporting the earnings in the third quarter of 2023, but now we're also moving towards the last quarter of the year. And uh, while, for example, LVMH has apparently seen, by the way, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. While LVMH has experienced a 9% growth, it's far, far away from the double digit percentage growths that they've experienced in the past years. Things are changing drastically. Another thing uh, that has happened is uh, that other brands are also experiencing lower numbers, especially Gucci at caring. Terrible numbers, apparently, since a while. But the interesting thing about Hermes, they are the only ones that are still kind of maintaining that momentum. They're still earning money. Now, there's several... Well, they're all still earning money, but Hermes is managing to have the biggest growth, apparently, right? And there's certain points to talk about here. While other brands, and you remember I was talking about this uh, a while ago, and we were talking about uh, other YouTubers and, you know, luxury YouTubers analyzing the situation of who are the people keeping these brands afloat. And a lot of YouTubers would say, oh, it's it's the rich, it's the rich. It's not the mid-class and lower class, the so-called aspirational customer. Now, by the way, you know what I think about that terminology. We've spoken about this in depth. Aspirational, you know, the luxury brands love to use that term to define poor customers. They just, luxury, heaven forbid you were to even mention the word poor. They don't like that, obviously. They're luxury, but they want the poor money. You see, so they coined the term aspirational customer, the customer that cannot offer the big ticket items. So they buy, you know, the stepping stone, the first stepping stone to enter into the luxury realm of said brands. You know, they're going to buy a small leather good, teeny tiny accessory, something with the logo visible, the aspirational customer. So apparently, most of these luxury brands have been counting on the aspirational customer, unlike what many other luxury YouTubers would tell you, it's only the rich. No, 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 no. Louis Vuitton, uh, Gucci, you know, all of them have been counting on the money of the little man. And the money of the little man came in in form of uh, pandemic money, <laughs> you know, because you would get your... You know, all of those checks the governments were giving out and you're not using them for anything. So let's buy some aspirational stuff, as they say. Now that's gone. Now, the brands that have been relying on that aspirational customer, they lost the aspirational customer. That's where these ginormous drops are happening. It's because the person that doesn't have a lot of money to begin with is not shopping anymore. So the brands, here's the proof. Is in the pudding. The brands have been held afloat. Their ginormous growths that made them multi-billionaires. It was you, the little man, who has barely enough money to put food on the table. How does that feel? You are the one who actually made billionaires even more rich. Way to go. Hermes played a different game. Unlike these other brands that were, right before the pandemic, relying heavily on tourists, not local clients, but tourists. Tourists who are more fickle in their spending. 
practices. You know, they would buy something, not buy something, they never come back again. Hermes never counted on those. They counted on return customers, customer base, return customer base, which is around about 90% in New York or 75% or 75% in Japan and 90% in New York, either that or that, which is a huge number for return customers. Most of these other brands didn't rely on that. Chanel, why their boutiques were so empty during pandemic, even though they started reopening again, because they lost their Chinese clients that were not allowed to travel anymore because of the lockdown. Hermès did not have that trouble. You see, Hermès also keeps their production very low. They say that they cannot hire more than a certain amount of people every year. They try to expand their factories, but it takes several years to learn how to do leather goods in a certain way at Hermès. So they are consciously keeping the numbers small. And because they want to cater to return customers, the customer that knows their boutique, that knows the sales associate, that where the sales associate knows exactly what the customer wants, the size of the customer, which colorways they want. And that kind of slow and steady wins the race. Interesting that a brand that is so dedicated to horses would also apply that strategy to their sales <clears throat> and marketing. Slow and steady wins the race, says the horse company. <laughs> Fabulous, isn't it? And that's exactly what they're doing. That's what they've been doing all these years and they keep doing it. So another aspect here uh, that I've been reading on and several articles that I've been reading up on in the past few weeks is, and here a lot of banks enter and start commenting about what is going on in the world. And they say that the luxury client is still there. The luxury, the luxury client is still purchasing but the luxury client is very, very dedicated to quality. They're not going to compromise on quality. But they will go in depth with the brand. They will expand and buy a lot of things from the brand. And that's exactly how Hermes plays it. People that buy into Hermes, they buy all sorts of stuff. Not just because they're playing the journey towards getting the hot ticket item bags, the quota bags, which, by the way, Hermes in a statement recently said they officially do not do that. Hermes says that, uh, no, it is completely against their policy to make you purchase other items before they allow you to purchase the Birkin or the Kelly. We'll go, we'll go. So I guess Hermes headquarters is implying that some managers in some areas of the world are doing something that they're not supposed to be doing because MS says we don't allow this. So somebody's doing it behind Her the big Hermes boss's back and they're like, I just want to make good profit for this boutique. I just want to make good sales. So I'm not going to give the Birkin and the Kelly just to anybody. You have to be a return customer. And a return customer Hermes has built, <laughs> definitely. And that sort of commitment is wealth. Because the customer, that's not your aspirational customer. The aspirational customer is not going to buy a $10,000 bag. The aspirational customer is also not going to keep coming back to Hermes to purchase a a porcelain plate, a silk scarf, a leather jacket, uh, you know, jewelry, you know, a bracelet, a, a ring, uh, a, a shirt, shoes, and then a bag. Aspirational customer does not do that. Aspirational customer buys one product. That's it. Depending how much the product costs, they might buy two or three a year. That's it. Hermes does not rely on that customer. And then they limit the quantity produced because they want to have it produced in a certain quality. And by the way, they don't just limit the amount of Birkins and Kellys that they make. Everything is produced to a high, at a high quality standard. So everything is in, in low quantities. I mean, I'm telling you, it took me almost a year to get this bracelet. And it's not a quota bracelet. It's just 
But when I got this bracelet, I can tell you right now, this is the best silver I have ever had in my life, and I love silver. This thing, the alloys that they used in this is on another level. It's just, you don't get silver like this anymore. Like this thing is, I'm sh look how shiny. I wear this every day, okay? It's almost one year old now, okay? We're getting towards one year, 12 months of wearing this on a daily basis and silver, and I have not polished it with their Hermes, you know, polishing cloth. No, 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 no. I wash this with hot water and then I clean it off with a towel literally and they tell you like don't even ever don't don't let this touch water maybe if it were a cheaper silver don't touch water but look at this thing it is like the day i bought it impeccable quality but to get that quality of silver takes time for them to source so there's that toys for kids the little plushy horses super hard to get because they don't make as many shirts certain denims that they produce really hard to get. Like we're talking, you see, this is not just the Burke and the Kelly. There's a waiting list for everything at Hermes. Most of the time, everything is sold out anyway. So, so it's not like they're implementing the strategy of, uh, it's just the Birkin and the Kelly and the Constance that are like in low quant, everything. But the problem is this, of course, the bags are really popular. So they have like usually five to six times higher demand on their bags than the actual amount that they can manage to produce. That's a huge upscale in demand, five to six times higher. There's that, not relying just on tourists, but relying on return customers that are not aspirational. Keeping quality high, not compromising on quality, even though the demand is so high, we're still not going to overproduce just because we're greedy. Looking at you, Chanel. And we're going to make more and more. Looking at you, LVMH. And we're going to make more and more and more because the demand is there, allegedly. Hermes is like, no, we're not going to compromise on the quality. Period. No matter what the product, no matter what the product, not just the bags. And then, and then to top it all off, they really train their sales staff as well. You know, every sales associate is specialized in one department, whether it be homeware, jewelry, leather goods, silks. They're very, very, very focused and specialized. So you are building on quality there. Now, there's a, there's a downside to all of this, which is my favorite por uh, part of this video, and we're getting to it now. So apparently, the negatives to all of this is that the waiting times, that you might have to wait a long time for a certain product. And again, Hermes says, well, we're not compromising on, you know, on, on the quality, so it is what it is. But here, the rich apparently are the ones with the biggest issue. They get very upset. They throw embarrassing tantrums on the sales floor at Hermes because they're spoiled brats, assholes, who just cannot bear the thought of waiting. I have the money. Who Do you know who I am? How dare you? Now give me that freaking Burke. I just love, 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 love when the sales associates tell the rich asshole, no. <laughs> Sorry, boo. You have to wait just like everybody else. Um, so the biggest backlash that Hermes has been getting is from the rich, but they don't care. I mean, of course, if you're very famous, Hermes finds a way to give you your bag immediately, for sure. For sure. We're not dumb. We know that there are priority lanes. Depending on who you are, you might get access to whatever you want. And then, of course, you can go to their flagship store in Paris, you know, do the lottery appointment thing, win the, win the appointment, go there, go to the leather department, and then get your dream Kelly or Birkin or Constance on that day. That's the Cabbage Patch Kids Kentucky store. You know, if you know, you know. You know what I mean? Like, you go there, that's the game they play. But other places have other, other routines. But... So Hermès is playing the game right. They have managed to, you know, block off the death of luxury, right? 
And also very interesting, apparently the online sales for fashion in general, but mostly luxury fashion, are dropping dramatically. People are not shopping online as much anymore as they used to. Uh, there's a report about Gucci since over a year now has experienced terrible drops online. Burberry also, I'm reading about really terrible numbers. Hermes, they're playing the game right, even online. Even online, they're still playing the game right. So. Listen, they got to be doing something right uh, if they're still afloat. I am liking very much their standard of slow and steady wins the race. Also, this not pushing you to overconsume. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this because, yes, I waited one year for this bracelet I really wanted, but like, it was nice to wait and not consume immediately. It kind of, you know, I, I, they wrote me. They didn't forget. Once the bracelet was there, they wrote me an email, said, dear, you know, client, it's, it's here. You have one week to pick it up. We're holding it for you. And wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, I appreciate it much more and I enjoy it much more. And I'm like, not there immediately. Okay, now what's the next thing I'm going to buy? I'm like, no, let me know. Let me taste it. Let me savor it, you know, for a moment here. So I am very much liking this almost sustainable, you know, fashion is never sustainable really, but this kind of sustainable approach to, to, sh to luxury shopping, not overdoing it, flavoring it, tasting it little by little with time, give it time to breathe. I'm really enjoying the slow pace uh, that I'm experiencing at Hermes as I am experiencing more and more Hermes, as I am diving more and more into the brand. So way to go. Way to go, you know. Way to go. Gemma is asking me, would you like to get a Birkin or Kelly? Sure. Of course I would. Of course I would. But I'm, I am in absolutely no rush. No rush. When the time is right, it'll happen. Oh, it will happen. When the time is right, though. And... I'm very confident I will get that phone call or email when the stars align. You see, this is also another thing. Um, Hermes made me always feel safe. Like, they're working on it. You know, you just got to give them time. So I never felt like they're going to lie to me. I, they've never lied to me thus far. When they said they were going to do something, they did it. It took them a, a, they're very slow, but they always deliver. Always. Thus far, knock on wood, they've always delivered. So I'm also very relaxed about the whole Birkin situation. I'm like, yeah, okay, it'll happen. Fabulous. Really fabulous. Yeah, when it happens, it's probably going to happen two price increases from now. I'm very well aware of that, but that's okay. I, I'm factoring that into my budgeting. That's okay. I don't mind. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but it's... I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this slow savoring of, of their products in general. You know, whether it be, you know, their Frisbee, <laughs> their bracelets. Uh, not their BB guns, but... Uh, you know, all the other stuff that I have from Hermes, uh, their silks, uh, their crops, you know, their perfumes, their cosmetic, what have you, you know, their cards, their toys. I mean, I have bought into Hermes on so many different levels, and this is years before I even contemplated a bag. Just to be very clear, I am not on a journey, on a spending journey in order to get a bag. Absolutely not. Just to be very clear. So, and all of my wish list items from Hermes, they've all been ticked off one by one. It just took longer, you know, but that time made me also appreciate the pieces more and it also enabled me to spend less. You see, it's a win-win in my opinion because I got a really good quality product in the end. I waited for it, but the wait was worth it. And while waiting for it, I spent less money. I don't know. It just, it works for me. Slow fashion, not fast fashion. That's right, Zara. That's a really good point. 
Zara just said that in the chats. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, the analysis. Thumb it up. Subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Bye. Mwah.